This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. What we're looking at right now is just the switch, and I can run show Mac address dash table. I used a little tab autocomplete there because I got tired of typing. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> show Mac address dash table. That command works on almost every Cisco switch. There's actually some older Cisco switches where the command <laughs> is show Mac dash address right. dash table, a slight variation. Mm -hmm. you've, you've seen that yep. before. Uh, but on, on all the ones made in the last couple of years, it's show Mac space address dash table. When you run that, it will show what MAC addresses the switch knows and what ports it's learned them on. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when I run that, the first thing you're going to see here is just a, a big list, a lot yeah. of MAC addresses. And you might say to yourself, man, this switch knows a lot right. of MAC addresses. Yeah. And they're all in order. Wow, the guys at IT Pro TV must man. have bought a batch of, of laptops. That's right. right? Uh, that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> on a Cisco switch, you have one MAC address that is the master address, the address of the device as mm -hmm. a whole. Then you have MAC addresses for every single port. Mm -hmm. All right, every single port on the switch has a MAC address. Now you may not be using it. In fact, if you're not doing what's called layer three switching, right. yeah, you're that. not using these MAC addresses at all. But the switch still needs to know about them. And so I'm going to have 48 MAC addresses in the list here as I go down, and these are all the ports on the switch. Then I get to the real ones, the there ones that it's truly learning. Okay, mm -hmm. and so I can see some MAC addresses that are in there, and it's it's been learning some, and now we're starting to see the ones that are the mm -hmm. computers here at IT Pro TV. So I can see MAC addresses, um, you know, quite a few of them. We've got, I don't know, close to 200 computers in the building, right. and so so they'll turn up in here, and we'll see, well, close to 200 MAC addresses, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Uh, 163. Oh, well, so, there you go. Yeah. So close. <laughs> so, um, so anyhow, we're, we're seeing a lot of MAC addresses. Now, the one I'm concerned about is my laptop. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I'm going to just clear out the MAC address table. Whoops. Dag on it. Was it? Uh... There we go. All right. So I'm just going to clear out mm -hmm. that MAC address table. Now, in, in real life land, you'd never really need to do this. Uh, the command, it won't show up on the exam, but for your own reference, it's clear MAC address dash table dynamic. Right. Right? That wipes out all the dynamically learned addresses. Now, dynamic versus static, yeah. right? When we talk about the idea here of dynamic versus static here, dynamic addresses are the MAC addresses uh, that the switch learns, OK? If I have a static MAC address table here, or something, a static MAC address entry, it means that I have actually programmed it in there and told it, hey, this is the MAC address you are actually going to use for us. So we want to make sure that, that we remember that. Yep. So the static ones you'll usually see, well, like the ones that are burned into the switch, right? right? The 48 ports, those are, are static. Right. We could manually put some static ones in there. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of reason for doing that. Actually, we'll, we'll talk a little bit yeah. when we get into security. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but most of them are going to be dynamic. I just wiped out all the dynamic ones on this switch. Now it's having to relearn. Now mm -hmm. it does create a little bit of a perform performance burden mm -hmm. in a production environment. So it's not <laughs> something you really want to do here in like a, a lab environment. It doesn't really make much difference. But the reason I wanted to clear it out is I want to show you guys how my laptop is being learned. Now, I actually unplugged the cable from my laptop. So it, it's not, mm -hmm. uh, not plugged in right now. Um, and what I need to do is I need to figure out what my MAC address is, because I don't actually know. <laughs> yeah, whoops. OK. So my physical network adapter right here, it ends in, I, I usually just use the end part of right. the MAC address. You know, you don't need the whole thing to find it. Um, so mine ends in 1770, right? So my, my MAC address is 0014D1B01770, mm -hmm. all right? So, I am on the wireless network here. So if I jump over to that switch, I probably will show up in the list. And does it have a filter? Yes. And so I'm going to try and find my specific MAC address. All right. And, uh, and I can just pull that right out of the background here, because I've already forgotten what it was. <laughs> um, 1770. Oops. Well, when you do it this way, you have to type the whole thing. Ah, so okay, I got to type yeah. the whole thing. So ah, it's there you go. Zero zero one four dot d one b zero dot seventeen seventy. All right, now that kind of ran under my head. So let me move it back over here. When Cisco writes a MAC address, they write it this way: four digits mm -hmm. in a period, 
four more digits in a period, and then the remaining four digits. So in Windows, mm -hmm. I saw it as two digits and a hyphen, two and a hyphen. Different vendors write it different ways, but Cisco writes it this way. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm saying, show me the MAC address table for this particular address. I'm mm -hmm. looking for this MAC address specifically. Okay. All right. Right now, the switch doesn't know about mm -hmm. it. It does not know about my MAC address. Didn't find it. Mm -hmm. All right. The reason why we don't know about the MAC address right now is because of the way that Cisco switches learn about the MAC addresses. Now, this is very important for you, especially in the beginning here. Cisco switches learn about the MAC address of the source uh, device. So if you're sending data in, you're going to have a source MAC address and destination MAC address. When you actually send data in, that is the one that it learns and associates with that port. So the source MAC address is the key here. So I'm going to plug my cable in. Mm -hmm. And once I plug in, within the first 30 seconds, the switch mm -hmm. will learn about my MAC address. All right. Yep. So I'm going to do that. I'm plugged into port number, what is this, port number two? So I'm just going to plug into port number two. <laughs> we should get a message here in a second about port number two coming up. Now, this switch is running something called Spanning Tree right. Protocol. And, and we haven't covered that in a show right. yet. Uh, it's a loop protection mechanism. So while the port is going to come up, it may actually stay down for a little bit. Looking at the front of it here, I see an orange light. So I have to wait 30 seconds mm -hmm. for the loop detection to finish. So I'm just going to give it a moment while it does that. So while it says the port is up, I'm not actually allowed to talk right now. Not right. until this port goes green back here. And it does take 30 seconds. Basically, for 15 seconds, it listens to see if there's a switch on the other side, if there's a switch that might be creating a loop. If there isn't, then for the next 15 seconds, it tries to learn my MAC mm -hmm. address and still verify there's no switch. Right. After 30 seconds of, of loop-free connectivity, the port actually comes up. All right. Yeah. If I, uh, I did create a loop, it would shut my port down, <laughs> and I'd never be able to talk. Right. So, so loop detection is a, a good thing. Am I still? Nope, I'm green. Nope. All right. So now I'm, now I'm actually up. So I'm just going to run that same command, show MAC address dash table address and punch in my MAC address. And when I run it, now I can see the switch has learned that I'm there. There's my MAC address. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on port 2. Yep. Now, I filtered the output on this command. Right. And I, I did that because if I just tried to find it on my own, <laughs> if I just looked at the full address table, right, I would have to go through this screen by screen and say, all right, where, where is 1770? Trying to find 1770, trying to find it. And you could be here a while, right? Yep. It's not sorted by right. port number. It's not sorted by, well, it's actually sorted by MAC address. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, you'll see some of it. But then yeah, uh, <laughs> if you have that. multiple VLANs like right. we do, then it's all over the place. So trying to find my address in here could be, could be pretty tough. Mm -hmm. um, this particular command, show MAC address dash table, has that nice little add-on where you can say address and specify a particular mm -hmm. address. Not every command does, nope. right? So uh, sh should I show them the command line filters? We, we haven't really done that. Not yet. Yeah, we haven't done that, but yeah, sure. Let's do it, because yep. it is really useful on switches. So mm -hmm. this switch right here, it's only got 48 ports, mm -hmm. right? But you guys see how big that MAC address table is. Some of the switches you'll work with out in the field, like the 6500s, uh, well, you know, we've got a 4500 <laughs> yeah. here, and it's got 144 ports on yeah. it. When you have that many ports, you can have hundreds, even thousands of MAC addresses out there. Mm -hmm. It gets overwhelming, Yeah. right? So Cisco has some filter commands that you can use. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I just run show MAC address dash table, and I spell it right, <laughs> I'm going to get the full table, right. right? The full MAC address table, everything. Okay. But I can add to the end of that. I can add the pipe symbol, mm -hmm. for example, right? The pipe symbol, it's the, the two vertical lines that are usually right above the enter key. Right. So like for me, I hit shift and backslash. Is that Oh, mm -hmm. same, yep. same laptop. So, uh, <laughs> yep, that's exactly. Yep. So yeah, that, that's kind of what it is for most people. And then you can pipe it into some neat little commands, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've got uh, include, begin, um, exclude, mm -hmm. right? Uh, those are the three that I, I usually use right mm -hmm. there. There's a couple other like section, section or whatever. Yeah. Um, so the three main ones though, begin. I can say show me the MAC address table and begin when you find a particular string. So don't mm -hmm. show me everything until you see this particular string. Right? right? Or you can say include, only show me the lines that do include, that actually contain a, per a particular string. Mm -hmm. And then there's the exclude, right? Yep. The exclude says show everything but that. <laughs> so, so all of them actually seem to have exact, well, no, I won't say exactly. They at least 
filter out a lot of information and lead you to that point mm -hmm. that we need. But remember that sometimes, though, if you just show the regular full-on commands, especially like the show running config command, right? If we do that, some production switches, the, the running config is gigantic. Yeah. And I mean, it could take you minutes, if not even longer, just to filter it through. And remember that if your entire production network is still running on that, that causes more stress on the CPU, causes more things that we have to worry about here. So using these filters is a very highly effective way to make sure that you see the information that you need to. Yeah. yeah. So let's say I just wanted to see the static ones, right? right? I could pipe that into the include command, and I could look for the word static. Now, mm -hmm. it is case, case sensitive. sensitive, so that's why I had to do static all capitalized, yep. right? And now, it's just going to show me the statics. See how it all mm -hmm. fit on one screen? Just the statics, right? I could have also said, uh, I could have piped it into the exclude command <laughs> and excluded the word dynamic. So show me everything except the dynamics. Now, that's kind of a nicer variation, because look mm -hmm. what I get. I get my table header, right? Nice. I lost all my table header before because it didn't include the word static. Right. Now I get the header, and it just excluded the, the dynamics. Uh, dynamics. Yep. So really cool command, really saves some time on the right. exam and, and in real life, that you can filter out any output if you know exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I was looking specifically for my MAC address, I could have said show MAC address dash table include 1770, mm -hmm. right? Just show me the MAC addresses that contain 1770. And I can run that, and, and there it go. is. No fuss, no musk, it's right in there. There's my MAC address, there's the port that it's on, and I'm in business. Mm -hmm.